so uh, this was a case of left main to led that we did recently uh, the patient presented with non ST elevation mi and he had a severe uh, what do you say chest pain on minimal exertion he could not even walk to the washroom you can see the led and the lc they are all diffusely diseased patient uh, refused for a cabg the rc is also uh, diffusely diseased and uh, this was the cranial view uh, you can see a diffusely diseased led with a lot of calcium uh, the patient was in the uh, government health package so we had a lot of limitations and the patient was uh, not uh, willing for a bypass surgery and had given that writing so uh, we had no other option but to uh, go for a ptc presenting the left main to the led and uh, you can see uh, that we are trying to predilate the lesion the lesion uh, the calcification is so much that uh, you know it is causing a real problem here so anyways we we are trying to predilate the lesion this is a 2 by uh, 10 mm balloon some more predilatation we are going up slowly and uh, now we are with a we are going slowly up, predilating it more and more. Uh, we could not see the calcium breaking up a lot. And uh, anyways, so we have tried to upsize the balloon. We're taking a smaller balloon and we are going down. We are taking a 2.25 mm balloon and uh, just predilating it. Again, doing some pre dilatation. Uh, this is a 2.25 mm balloon. I think 2.5 mm balloon, not 2.25. This one was the 2.5 mm balloon. And uh, yes, so adequate pre dilatation uh, so that you uh, sure that the stent can expand is very necessary and very. It is a prerequisite when we are doing uh, dealing with a highly heavily calcium uh, artery. And you can see that uh, this slow flow, uh, the patient developed chest pain again. Overall, it was quite bad. Probably because of uh, the dissection that was induced uh, because of the uh, upsized balloon that we had to use to break the calcium. Otherwise, the stent won't expand. So this is after some uh, nitrates and uh, some uh, liquorandil. Uh, we can see that there is a dissection flap and uh, but the flow has been restored. So whenever there is a dissection flap, the best thing is to do is not to uh, lose the wire position and uh, place the stent as quickly as possible. So that we are doing that and the distal portion right about now. So trying to position the stent here. So the dissection flap has to be covered and uh, I think uh, we are doing a fairly nice job. The stent has expanded well as you can see. This is a 2.75 mm uh, stent. So what we are doing is uh, we are expanding the stent balloon and pre-dilating the lesion. So this is a 2.75 and you can see that the lesion is expanding well so we are sure that the uh, stent size would reach at least 2.75 in the uh, but uh, we we were aiming we are aiming for more uh, but this is a good way where you can pre dilute the lesion and achieve uh, almost one is to one uh, ratio of the artery and uh, some more pre dilatation here so now we've come up with the stent as you can see and uh, you can see that uh, we're placing the stent in the left main to the led and uh, this is a 3.5 uh, mm stent um, we are able to achieve good stent expansion you can see here 3.5 mm stent expanding very well and uh, yes so doing the uh, post dilatation with 3.5 mm balloon nc balloon some more stent expansion post dilatation here you can see uh, we are going up to uh, 16 to 18 atmospheric pressure 
patient was very thin and fragile so you know anyways uh, this is the final view and overall very very good results uh, that you can see and uh, if i just go back and show you how the artery was that maybe you might be able to appreciate a little more so this was the initial uh, artery and this is the artery now and i think we've done a fairly good job uh, thank you uh, the patient was discharged after 48 hours doing very well still in follow up thank you